is your boy, Wild Beezy. Happy Halloween. And we are here to react to the Halloween edition of AEW for October 30th, 2019. Started off the show with Tony Schiavone and Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes did something that reminded me of something Ric Flair did way back in the day. He was getting off a Learjet with his brother, Dustin Rhodes. But that was a nice touch. And then they all got into a limo. And there was a, uh, a segment with Tony talking to uh, Cody. And they were talking about his dad. How uh, one time back in the late 80s, Tony Schiavone and Willie Nelson were together. Uh, I believe it was in Tucson. And they went to go get... Well, Tony went to go get Dusty Rhodes. And he had opened the door completely naked. <laughs> Wow, that, that got a nice uh, reaction from Cody, and then they got serious, and Cody had mentioned how him and Chris Jericho had uh, shared a locker room for uh, many years in the uh, WWE, and uh, how he knows just how good of a performer he is. We get to the contract signing, and everything goes amicably for the most part. It ends with a handshake, but then as Chris Jericho tries to pull away, Cody pulls him back in and he says some inaudible uh, things to him. And then Chris uh, Jericho says, you know, we can stand here all night, but I think you're needed elsewhere. And one of the best beatdowns i ever seen happen. Sammy Guevara and uh, Jake Hagar, the artist formerly known as Jack Swagger, laid him out and they put a dent into the limo, Cody's limo. And then with uh, Dustin Rhodes' head. Slammed him on it, drove his head into it, and then they uh, pulled a trick out of Arn Anderson's uh, playbook. They got Dustin uh, Rhodes' arm in the limo, and they slammed it with the car door. And I had never, ever seen that brutal of a beatdown leading up to a title match of somebody's family member. I mean, I'd have, you'd have to go all the way back to 2002 when The Undertaker got a hold of Ric Flair's uh, son, David, at uh, Trax up in uh, Connecticut. Yeah, that, that was the last time I ever seen anything that brutal. <laughs> My lord. I'll tell you, though, what was a blunder seeing Adam Page be Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara, in my book, is ten times the wrestler than Adam Page is. One of the bad matches didn't care for the, the ending result. You got to see the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega in an exhibition style match where they got to show off their skills against some people I'd never seen before. I can't even remember their names, to be honest. Um, but they did get the 1 2 3 tonight, adding to their uh, win loss record in the win column. With that W, baby! Because they are the elite, the, the elite, the godfathers of A. E W A A E W. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> and I'll tell you the coolest part of the night. Frankie Kazarian made history. It was SCU becoming the AEW Tag Team Champions. Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian are now your first ever and reigning and defending AEW World Tag Team Champions. Frankie Kazarian made history with this. He is now the first man to ever hold the TNA Tag Team Titles, the Ring of Honor Tag Team Titles, and now the All Elite Wrestling World Tag Team Titles. He's the first man to ever achieve this. Oh yes. Really enjoyed the broadcast overall. It was a thumbs up situation. And I'll tell you, the highlight of the night was John Moxley cutting an absolutely tremendous pre pay per view match promo against Kenny Omega. He really brought the heat and brought the fire. And I highly recommend you guys go back and watch that. This was a thumbs up situation, 100%. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Thunder or Blunder. I am now on TikTok at Thunder or Blunder. I am now on Instagram at Thunder or Blunder. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Wallbucks. See you guys later.